What's up, everyone? Welcome to Inside Out Podcast. I'm your host, Yamoria Wright. The intention of this podcast is for you to enrich your life with behind the scenes interviews from entrepreneurs and thought leaders who are ready to keep it real about their journey thus far and what making an impact looks like to them from the inside out. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Inside Out Podcast. This is part two two of my interview featuring Andrea Bordeaux. Hey, Andrea. Hi. Hello, hello. If you all have not listened to part one, I will put the link below uh, and I encourage you to go back to part one because we are picking up right where we left off. Well, first, let's just do a quick check-in. So yeah. Let's, how, how are you today? Where are you at? This is you a know, different day. It, this is a different day. I'm doing really, really well. It's been it's been lovely. I got up early this morning, a little bit earlier than I've been getting up the last several days. I love opening up my windows, um, like opening the blinds, letting sun shine in, letting sunlight in, and just like brightening up my space. Mm. And I went and I prayed and I just I said a little prayer to you know Mother God, Father God, the ancestors, totality the universe, you know, whomever, Mm -hmm. (laughs) whomever, whatever you want to call it, uh, God, and just thank them for the day and ask them for continued protection and healing and also protection and healing for everybody else out in the collective. And I ask for them to provide peace for those who are in the beginnings of their stages of awakening or who are mm. precipice or even those that are in it right now, just to bring peace and clarity to them and, and contentment and uh, express thanks for everything that I have, for the fact that I have you know breath in my lungs and that I woke up yes. this morning to a new day. Um, and then I did, um, there's this healing modality that I learned that's Balinese called mm. Shiva Murti and you have to activate it. You have to activate the energy every day and we call it firing up. And so I did that. Um, it's sort of like an active meditation. Okay. And then I went and I sipped on my coffee and looked at Twitter for a little bit. And then I did a meditation <laughs> to prepare me for the, the full moon um, that is happening tonight and just... Yeah got the groundwork for setting my intentions for the day and for what I want to call in and also release with all Mm. of this this energy that's swirling around us. So it's been a, it's only one o'clock, one 30. And I feel like I have done so much. That's amazing. (laughs) I love it. But okay, lead us, lead us back down the journey. Um, let's see. So the dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, so yeah, I would say this is probably around maybe April, May was when things, I mean, things started getting really difficult for me before, um, I finished my work on, on NCIS LA. I was super, super stressed out and could feel myself um, sliding into depression. Mm. I dealt with depression like pretty regularly since I was a teenager. And so I got to the point where I was very conscious and aware of what it felt like in my body, what it looked like in my behavior. And, um, I was very clear that I was falling into a depression, but the thing about depression is that as conscious as you are of it, if you don't have the tools to move through it, then it's just kind of like a, a wave that you you have to ride. Or that's the way that I felt about it then was like, okay, well, I just have to ride this wave mm. um, until it until it comes down. But in the last couple of months that I was on the show, I lost a lot of weight. Um, I was really, really thin. Um, I was probably about 98 pounds. Wow. And that's not super unusual for me, but I would say like my my – healthy weight rests around like 105 pounds. That's like okay. where I look and feel the best. Um, and so the fact that I was that thin was alarming to me. And it was, mm-hmm. it was also odd because I was getting a lot of compliments. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that can get dangerous. 
Yeah, it can be very, very dangerous. But I was staying on top of that. And, you know, one of the reasons why I was so thin was because I just couldn't eat. I Mm. could not, I could not keep any food down. I had little appetite, but the, the hunger was really just hurting my body. But when I would try to eat, I, I just couldn't eat anything. I was doing mostly smoothies and I was eating soups and like crackers and, and, and like light things, but I couldn't stomach anything that was really heavy or sugary. Um, I was just having, I was having a really hard time sustaining myself. And, um, around April, around like April, May, my oldest sister came to visit. We were going to a festival together and she had never, she had never done one. And we spent a lot of time, you know, just talking about what was going on in in my life and her life. And I shared with her, you know, my experiences on the show and like what the difficulties were for me. And, um, you know, I was, I wasn't sure that I was going to be coming back to the show. Mm -hmm. Um, I had done a full season as a recurring guest star, um, but I had been given a contract for a series regular for the following season for what would have been season 10. So I had a contract. I had gone through the whole deal memo process. Um, My agents had negotiated my rate. I mean, it was, I had a contract. I, Mm -hmm. as far as I understood, I was going to be going back season 10. But the way that my role ended on the show, it was very open-ended. We didn't know whether or not she was dead or alive. Um, I didn't even know that that was what was going to be happening until the episode actually was released to us. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so the producers didn't tell me. um, I had no idea. And so that just compounded my stress because... I, I wanted it so badly. I wanted so badly to to be on the show and also to have that that series regular credit because I had never mm-hmm. never been a series regular before. And that's sort of like for television, that's like the holy grail. You know, yeah, you yeah. have fact you're making more money. Um, it's just it's it's like job security basically, and anything below a series regular just isn't really secure. Mm-hmm. I mean, even being a series regular isn't secure, but I know you understand what I'm, yeah, you know, yeah. what I'm saying in the context of the business. And so I just it just compounded my stress level um, to the point where I just I didn't know what was going to happen, and I my my anger like my anger was up really high. I was irritable. I was like snapping on friends and my boyfriend at the time, I was snapping on him and just getting, you know, a lot of negative feedback. Um, Mm -hmm. I was getting a lot of negative feedback in my personal life, which was also difficult because I, I didn't understand why I just felt like so much was happening to me and it felt really unfair. And it felt like, I had worked so hard and like, I felt like the rug was being pulled out from under me. I didn't understand, you know, I had gotten what I thought was my big break and I was so excited and I had worked so hard on the show and it felt like everything was just kind of crumbling down. And I didn't, I really just didn't understand why. And I, what I later learned through talking with my sister, cause she kind of, you know, she asked me some, some pretty direct questions. She was just like, well, what, what about your role? What role did you play? And I was just like, what the fuck do you mean? (laughs) Um, I thought you were my sister. You're supposed to be here for me. Are you serious? Uh, Honestly, like whose side are you on? Uh, (laughs) I was like, oh, excuse me, did you not hear everything that I just said? Obviously, I'm the victim here. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh. But yeah, she just, you know, she she was just asking me like really pointed direct questions. And obviously, I, I didn't want to hear it. But I was at that point where, you know, where if you, when you're in such a state of resistance, you know, the messages just get louder and louder and louder. So you have no choice but to listen and to hear what is being said was to you. Was that the moment that um, you decided to, that you began to listen with your sister? That, that was the moment where I began to listen. Yeah. And it was, and it was really, really painful because 
it, it was it was painful because I started I had this little like it was like a, a break where I was just like, oh my God, I'm not completely innocent mm-hmm. in this. Whole and then it was just then I then there was the struggle of kind of, you know, where you you realize your behavior, your role in something, and then you 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 fall into that that trap of of guilt or shame. And and I just felt really I felt really ashamed when I started to realize, okay, well, I didn't handle this the way that I could have, or I should have done this instead, or I should not have allowed this to affect me in this way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I started really seeing all of the places where I personally dropped the ball. And it didn't matter what I felt was being done to me or what I felt was happening to me. I had a choice in how I responded to that. And I realized that I wasn't having responses. I was having reactions and those you know reactions are emotion based and they're they're fueled by those latent unexpressed emotions that are being triggered by whatever that stimuli is that that you're experiencing and once i once i realized wow you know i i fucked up it it kind of sent me into like a a deeper a deeper spin of of depression where i was i i was just mad at myself i was just really mad at myself and you know it took me a couple of more weeks it was it was probably until the end of june when you know my contract it was I, they had until the end of june to you know like execute the contract or let it lapse and the days were just ticking by and i like i knew deep down in my gut that i was not going to be coming back onto mm-hmm. the show but i still had this really you know naive hope that i was and then like june 30th came and went and once that happened i there was there was no other possibility it was a done deal and then there was some anger you know i experienced some anger about that because i was like well they didn't tell me or why didn't anyone call me and just like a lot a lot more of that of feeling like i didn't get what i felt like mm-hmm. i deserved and so what that sparked in me was sort of this feeling of okay well you need to take a step back it's time to take a step back and really start looking at yourself and finding ways to heal yourself because the way that you reacted in those situations or what what the behavior that manifested is just not okay and i never wanted to feel or experience anything like what i had felt and experienced during that time it was it was one of the most painful things i've ever gone through in my life what what did that um, healing process look like to you? Is this when you decided, okay, I need to take a, a step back from the industry? It it wasn't even so much taking a step back from the industry because I was still I was still auditioning, mm-hmm. but I wasn't I wasn't really I wasn't booking anything. And I what I started to realize was that what was gonna come next for me was gonna come in its own time. And I needed to take the time that I had off by not working to work on myself. And, you know, so I slowly started making little lifestyle changes. By by the time the summer was over, I had, you know, I, I put some weight back on. I was eating well again. And then I slowly started, um, I started seeing a chiropractor mm-hmm. because I had so much stress and tension in my body. Like I was in pain um, a lot. And I started seeing a chiropractor and they they told me they were like you have your stress hormones are so high. He was like you were too young to have stress hormones this high. Like, what are you doing to work on your body and to to relieve your stress? And I was like, well, I'm not really doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> like I wasn't really doing anything. Like I would work I was working out, you know, occasionally, but I really wasn't doing anything active or anything to 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 bring my stress levels down in a in a conscious way. 
And so after, you know, seeing the chiropractor regularly for a couple of months and hearing it over and over again, Andrea, you're too stressed. You need to bring your stress down. I downloaded, I, and I had had the Headspace app for a while and I had like periodically would meditate. And when I say periodically, I mean like once every like month okay. or so I would just like sit and try to meditate. But then I just committed to a meditation practice and I started doing their programs and building up my, my, my skill level for, for meditation. And then I started taking yoga. I started taking yoga at my gym and then I left my gym and I just joined a yoga studio and started doing yoga like three, four days a week. And this was by now, this is the end of 2018. Mm -hmm. That's, that's where we're at at this point. 2018, I started my yoga practice, my meditation practice. I had already started feeling like so much better in my body, so much more connected and grounded. I had been doing um, meditations where I would go in and talk to my my inner child, mm -hmm. and I and I discovered that after having like having a really bad conflict with with my mom. You know, we had had a big fight or over Thanksgiving, and then it ended up turning into a fight with my my boyfriend at the time. And I was still just so angry and so triggered by by things. And I I was just like, I can't I can't keep <laughs> responding <laughs> like this. I I can't keep getting angry over other people's behavior or the things that other people are saying to me. I have to find a way to to temper this, you know, I was Googling about like, you know, conflicts with mothers and, you know, I've known so many people that have had like tumultuous, tumultuous relationships with their moms. And I just found like a random PDF that talked about healing your inner child. And I had never really heard the concept before, but the way that it broke everything down, you know, it, it essentially said that, you know, and it's not just with mothers, it's with everyone, you know, the way that people treat you and how they speak to you or the things that they do to you has nothing to do with right. you. It's a reflection of them. They're showing you who they are and how they feel about themselves in the way that they react to you or treat you. And your job is to go in and heal your inner child and learn to reparent yourself so that you're not having emotional responses from which the epicenter is your inner child, you know, a, a small being who feels like this is the only way to get their needs met. You have to reparent your inner child so that your responses are coming from the adult. Right. Can you walk us through <laughs> yeah. a little bit of what that looks like, repairing your inner child? So for me, what I did was, you know, I would go into my meditative state, you know, sit, do my breathing, get into the relaxed state where I'm now in my mind and starting to filter through and release all of the thoughts that are unnecessary to that particular practice or whatever my intention is that I set. And I started with a, a visualization where I wanted to find what would be a safe space to have her come out and sit with me and, and talk with me. Oh, but let me rewind a little bit. So I went through, I went through a lot of my photos and I grabbed a bunch of pictures of myself from maybe the ages of like three or four until I was about 10 years old. Um, and I chose those photos because that, that, that time period represented a, a period in my life where I felt like my life was being, you know, turned upside wow. down with like my parents, my parents divorcing and like my father, um, you know, spent a lot of that time period in, in prison. Um, he was a, a drug addict. And so I really wanted to focus on myself at those ages because I felt like that was where so much of the healing needed to come mm -hmm. from. Um, those feelings of like not being heard, not being seen or feeling abandoned or mistreated or like you're not important, like all of those things that we feel as adults are embedded into us as children. And we just don't learn the proper tools and techniques to not only heal that, but come from a place that is more in observation of what's happening rather than reacting uh -huh, to what's happening. Uh -huh. And so going back to my safe space, the pl one of the places that I love the most as a child and in my childhood home, um, we had a big tree in our backyard and 
I lived in that tree. Mm. I loved climbing that tree. I mean, every day I was outside climbing that tree and I loved going um, up as high as I could. And I loved to just sit on the branches and just daydream. It was sort of like my escape. Um, and sometimes I would climb the tree with my, with my sister, but I spent a lot of time in the tree by myself. And so I chose that as my safe space. So in my visualization, I saw my house and I saw myself standing in my backyard, looking up at the tree that I climbed every day for years and years and years. And then I went to climb up the tree and I remember like which branch I grab on and lifting myself up and where do I plant my foot and how do I pull myself up? And then I climbed to this next branch. Like It was like I could see everything in my mind. And so as I'm climbing the tree, I got to the little perch that I loved and I envisioned my younger self, my childhood self, sitting on that perch waiting for me. And so I just joined her and I, I just, I said, you know, hi, how are you? How are you doing? And, you know, and I just had a conversation with my younger wow. self and I asked her what she was feeling. Like, what are you feeling right now? And I listened to what it was that she had to say about how it was that she was feeling and what she was going through. And then I acted and gave her what I needed, but wasn't able to get during that time in my life. And so I gave her that comfort and that love. And I talked to her about how everything was okay and that she had no more reason to be upset or angry or afraid because I was there and I got her and that she is safe because I'm there with her and I am never, ever going to leave her. And I let her cry. And like in this, in the meditation, like my, my inner child is crying. I'm crying, you know, and it, and like whatever emotions come up for you in those meditations are beautiful and you should allow those emotions to come up because you can't heal those parts of your history without feeling the feelings that are attached to them. And so I let myself cry, which is really her crying and her releasing. And I asked her, you know, what do you need for me right now? What can I give you? And she said that she wanted a hug. And so I hugged myself. Like I hugged her in the, in the visualization, but I also wrapped my arms around myself and I gave myself a hug and just cried and cried and cried. And that was, that was my first experience with that meditation and that visualization exercise of sitting with her and, and talking with her and comforting her and letting her know that you don't have to feel this way anymore because I've got yes. it from here. Yes. And that was... That was probably December, like December of 2018, the first time I ever did that. And that was sort of like my process. I would do my meditations, my visualizations, um, yoga, um, was really just working on my internal self and reconnecting my mind and body, um, creating more synchronicity between the two so that I could grow my awareness. And then the, the next phase after that, you know, like once you start doing that type of healing work, all you can do is wait for the opportunities to come up for you to make different choices. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a matter of, oh, I'm going to do this meditation and now I'm healed. It's, well, I'm doing this meditation and it's growing my awareness. And now what's going to happen is the universe is going to start testing me. It will it will start testing you. It will start putting you in situations or environments that are giving you the opportunity to have those same things come up for you, but you get to sit in observance of it and make a different choice. So rather than reacting in the way that you had previously been reacting your whole life because of those unmet needs you had as a child, you in control as the adult get to see it for what it is and respond differently, which completely shifts you on a, on a cellular level. It changes you ontologically. Everything changes in your, in your physicality, in your cells, in your wiring, in your energetic frequency. All of that will shift as you see those situations differently and make changes accordingly to your, according to your higher self.
which is your adult right. self. So we're gonna we're gonna hold right here for a quick message from the sponsor, but yeah, this makes sense. Okay, we are back, and yes, Andrea, that makes a lot of sense. This this all makes a lot of sense to me, and also this is maybe in alignment with it, but it brings up the idea to me and the concept of time being circle, a uh, cyclical and being like a circle, not straight through. Yeah. So this idea, what, I, what yeah. I was seeing when you were describing this is I'm seeing you going back, so to speak, in time and undoing mm-hmm. these knots and these entanglements, right? Yes. That we experience yes. in what we call the present, right? 100%. That it is time mm-hmm. travel for sure. And every single person that has a brain, that has a mind, that has the ability to think and to visualize can time travel. We're all time travelers if we want to. And that really is how you change the patterns moving forward as you go back in time and you remove, it's like you're removing that frequency. Yeah. (laughs) And it allows you to raise your vibration in the present because you're no longer being lowered by something that's unacknowledged and unhealed in your past or in your history or in your subconscious. Mm. Um, Because time isn't Mm. linear time. Like you said, it's cyclical. It's, I mean, it's, it's even, it's even bigger than that. Like it kind of makes me think about, (sighs) <sighs> like, I don't know, like, what's a good example? Like, like Interstellar, mm-hmm. for instance, where he, he finds like, he, wh- wh- what's it called? The, the Tesseract? The, the tesseract. tesseract. Where yeah. mm-hmm. He's like in the Tesseract and he's able to see like all of those moments from his mm-hmm. past with his daughter. And he can't like actually like, he, he's not able to physically like insert himself in there. But the way, like, do you remember how he was able to like, knock books off the mm. shelf i'm so bad at explaining no, movies I'm but it, it's because I've, I've only seen it once um mm-hmm. well, like, do you remember how remember how he could literally it was like thousands and thousands millions billions of mm-hmm. screens all of the different moments in his life and he goes back and finds the one that he needs to shift in order to change right. the future and that's what you're doing when you are doing these types of like this type of shadow work, this type of um, visualization, this healing where you're going back and you're literally changing the past so that your future can be different so that your future can vibrate on a higher level than it was back then when you started on that path. Would you say that prior to that, so we were going back now, so I guess this puts us around June, would you say that you were mm-hmm. at what you would consider a rock bottom or the lowest point? 100%. Yeah. I mean, I feel like my, my rock bottom lasted about okay. six months. I feel like I was starting to, like June, around June was definitely like the bottom of the rock mm-hmm. bottom, but it still took me like quite a few months before I got to the point where I started feeling like, I was getting some like clarity or or progress. Like I was moving forward and making making different choices. Mm-hmm. It it still wasn't, I guess, enough in my mind because I was in a lot of ways still reacting to some of the same triggers. And I just didn't know, I didn't know how to do it differently. And so I started looking into, and I've been wanting to get a therapist for a really long time anyway, but I was just really dead set on having a black female Mm -hmm. therapist. And it was one of the reasons why I didn't have one because it is very hard to find a black. (laughs) Because mind you, they always have, they Uh, also have to be good for you. (laughs) It can't just be any black woman, you know? Yeah. And I just kept running into these obstacles where I was, I would find one and either she wasn't taking new clients Mm. or they weren't taking my insurance or they were in Orange County, which would mean I would have to, you know, drive to the OC once a week, which I was like, there's no fucking way I'm going to do that. I was like, there's gotta be a better way. And so I, I, uh, my, my good friend, Chelsea, who I think mm-hmm. I mentioned, she had been studying with a woman named Candace Silvers. Mm-hmm. Um, she had been studying with her for about four or five years. And she had told me about her years ago. She's a human behavior expert. And she's also like, um, like a channel. 
and she's also a healer and she's, she's everything. She's all the things she's everything. And, you know, I, I reached out to Chelsea because my, my relationship was kind of going down the drain. We were fighting a lot. I was having a hard time with my own, my own shit and my own, you know, reactionary behavior. And I desperately wanted to fix it because I didn't want to, I wanted to be, I wanted to be better. And I just was continuing to realize that a lot of the ways that I was moving through the world wasn't fair to him or, or any of the other people that I love when I realized, okay, I am just not going to be able to find a black therapist. I guess I'm going to have to go, go to Candace. Um, (laughs) I, I, reached out to Chelsea to get more information so that I could go in and audit a class. Mm. And one of my biggest, one of the biggest reasons why I was so resistant to going to see Candace was, you know, I was just like, I like, what is, I'm a, I'm a young black woman. What is this rich, older white woman going to tell me about Mm. anything? Like, what could she possibly teach me? I just had all of these ideas and, and judgments about who mm. she was based on just like an outer perception of her. And I went and I audited a class and, you know, she does classes in her home, um, pre-corona. <laughs> right, 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 right. Oh, that's crazy. That's true though. <laughs> different society now. <laughs> right. It's a different world now. Um, but in normal cir- or, you know, in previous mm-hmm. circumstances, she was, um, you know, she does classes out of her home, which I actually thought was really nice. And it's it's always in a group unless you pay for a private session. And so it's like, you know, 12 people sitting around the couches in her in her living room. And she's, you know, sits in an, in an armchair sort of in the middle. And it's not it's not like group therapy and like, oh, well, I'm having all these <laughs> issues. And da, 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 da. it's more it's more the, the framing of it is like, ask a question yeah. and I'll, I'll give you the answer. Well, not, she won't say, she never gives you answers. She just teaches you how to not only see your circumstance in the highest possible way, but she gives you tools for deprogramming negative or destructive behavior. And she also gives you tools for how to see other people and where they're coming from so that you can respond from the heart and not from your emotional programming. And, you know, halfway through that first class, I was like, sign me up. Mm. I don't even remember what was discussed, but I just remember watching her work with other people and then presenting, you know, dilemmas that they were having in, in, in their lives. And the way that she spoke about those scenarios, everything just mm. clicked. Every single she was saying just clicked and clicked and clicked. It w- what was interesting was that she wasn't really letting people talk. Like you're not going to sit there and just talk, you know, for minutes on end about what <laughs> you're going through. She's a human behavior expert. She's reading you. Just by you being in front of her, she can tell you like who you mm. are. <laughs> That's reading. That's who reading. You are. She's reading. That is a real read. Um, she can tell you who you are, how you move through the world, how you see the world and why it's not working for you. And then she just shifts you, which is, she'll just say a few things. She'll talk for a couple of minutes. And then all of a sudden you just see everything differently. And it's so difficult to explain this work to people, but I signed up right away. And my first class the next week, you know, I raised my hand to, to ask a question and it was, it was one of the most painful experiences of my mm. life. <laughs> <laughs> but we, but we said this, right? Like in part one, that like doing the work on the other side of it is beautiful, but it's, you got to mm-hmm. go through that pain or you're not, or the work isn't being done. It, you exactly. asked one question and it was painful. Well, and it wasn't even, it wasn't, what was painful was that I just had all of these ideas mm-hmm that I was holding on to of how things are supposed to Mm. be. And I was in just really in resistance. Like I was really frustrated by the fact that she wouldn't let me talk, that I couldn't like get out what it was that I was trying to say about what I needed help with. And in my mind, I was like, how can she possibly know what I'm trying to say if I don't get to say it? 
And, you know, looking back, I mean, that was, that was me being triggered. That was that, that really dire, desperate need to be heard and to be understood was what was coming forward. And the fact that I felt like she wasn't hearing me was triggering my emotional Mm -hmm. response. And what I learned, and it took me months of being in class to finally let this click because I would get really frustrated. And it was hard for me to just sit there and listen and listen without actually getting to say anything. And what I realized was that she was literally giving me everything that I needed. And I was shifting significantly through hearing those coachings mm-hmm. from her. And it got to the point where I finally realized the reason why she cuts you off is not because she doesn't care about what you have to say or what you have to say isn't important. It's because she's interrupting your pattern. Oh my gosh. That, okay. Yeah. Wow. And so when you're, when you're speaking from a pattern rather than being hyper-present to where you are in that very moment, That's when she jumps in to redirect that pattern that she's witnessing happening in that moment. That's where that flustered frustration comes from, obviously. It's like it's like Mayday, May that's really what it is. Like, oh my gosh, my machine, my machine, my machine is breaking. Yeah. My system is being interfered with. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You know, I would encourage anyone who's interested to look her up, CandaceSilvers.com. She's doing classes on Zoom yes, right yeah. now. I would encourage anyone who's, who hears this and it resonates to audit a class and see if they're interested in this type of healing work, um, auditing a class and seeing if they get something out of it. Because I, her, her tagline that she uses a lot is, what if you came to ask a question and instead you got your life? Ooh. Yeah. And I feel like since since beginning this work with her, I really have got in my life. And she's kind of like, she's the kind of woman who will say like, listen, I'm going to promise you X, Y, Z. And everything that she promises you will happen if you do, if you do the work. I mean, so many people in her classes or who coached with her or um, do private sessions with her have had tremendous success in life. I mean, healed people, I mean, people who have been, you know, drug Mm -hmm. addicts, you know, been gone sober or left abusive relationships, people who, when they started coming to her were broke and weren't making any money are now make have successful businesses. I mean, she told me when I first started, it was like a couple months after I started working with her, I I joined her acting Mm -hmm. class because she's a human behavior right, expert. Acting, hello, uh, makes sense. That's all acting is. Acting is just human behavior. And she told me in that in the summer when I started working with her, she was just like, Andrea, you are an incredible, incredible actress. You could be a star. You could win an Oscar. I see you doing incredible things. And I guarantee you, if you right now you're not hireable. Like she just straight up told she's like, you're not hireable mm-hmm. right now. She was like, we need to, we need to get rid of your anger. But she's like, if you keep working with me, I guarantee you, you're going to be starring in a TV show before you know it. And less than six months after being in her acting class, I booked my very first starring role in a TV show. And it's just, you know, doing, doing the work and committing to myself every single day, but also committing to the responsibility that I have to other Mm. people. Doing this work isn't just about me and my life. It's about the way that I impact every single person that I come in contact Mm. with. You know, it's not fair to move through life knowing that you can do better for others and you don't Mm. do it. It's irresponsible. Irresponsible. And it's so Mm -hmm. amazing because no matter what one's dream is, right? It could could be to have a successful finance firm, like whatever it is, the idea that to be able to literally rise to the best, your best self, to the highest frequency, and to begin climbing, you know what I'm saying? Because it's the journey of it. In order to do that, healing is so imperative. And to skip it means that even if, you know, on the outside achieving this, you know, so-called success happens, that's why you have so many people who might, you know, have the things, but inside they're, they're falling apart because, oh Mm -hmm. my gosh. Oh, and then again, it's still not, they're still not bringing their, their best self 
to the world? How could you? Exactly, exactly. And and part of the responsibility of mm-hmm. healing is to share that with other people. You know, it kind of like if, if you believe in, you know, if you're Christian, for instance, I, I think a lot of like Christians um, could probably resonate with this because it's like, you know, I guess the Bible calls it like mm-hmm. spreading the word of mm-hmm. God. Um, and not, not in a way that you're trying to indoctrinate other people, but by walking in your own truth and being honest and open about what it is that you've experienced, because we are not like, yes, we're individuals, but we're part of a greater collective. You're not, whatever it is that you're feeling or going through, there are so many other people that are feeling that or have felt that or are going through it, or have gone through it, or will feel it and go through it. And you having already walked through that, that shadow, you know, it's your responsibility to to hold the torch for the next person to make it easier for them. But our culture, our society kind of reverts to like a low vibrational regressive mindset of, well, I went through it. So you should Mm -hmm. too. It was hard for me. So it needs to be hard for you too. Like, why should it be easier for you? It wasn't easy Mm -hmm. for me. That's how a lot of people feel about their experiences. They rather than, you know, creating a path that is easier to walk on for someone else, they want you to walk down the same path of broken glass that they had to walk down. And I just don't think that that's what we're on this planet for. Oh, wow. I (laughs) know I am just so like, I'm literally moved to tears right now. I'm so, this is so, um, I don't even, I I don't know that I have the vocabulary. I would, I can say inspiring because the word is just like there, but it is just, it's captivating really and and enriching. Yeah, it's enriching, which is in alignment of, you know, the podcast. I, I feel so full from you sharing this because again it resonates on so many different levels on so many different levels and it is and also I've seen you know even some therapists will say you know I'm a human behavior specialist and everything but to understand that from the lens that from the way you framed it to understand that form of therapy and not because a lot of people will feel, and especially people of color, especially black women will feel like, like you said, well, like therapy should look like this for me, you know, and Mm -hmm. it just stops us from pursuing it. Yes. And I mean, one of the, one of the biggest um, and greatest gifts that Candace has given me through this work is the recognition that I don't know shit about Mm. shit, you know, like there, of course, there are things that I'm conscious of or aware of, but this world is really just an amalgamation of ideas. And we either agree to certain ideas or we or we don't. But your idea of something can change. And then they do change. I mean, people like to say, oh, well, people are fickle. Well, people people aren't fickle. It's just people are continuously evolving and growing and shifting and seeing the world in a different way. So what resonated with them at one point maybe doesn't resonate with them at another point. And that's okay too. And and if I and if I could share, you know, one more Absolutely. thing, you know, my my boyfriend and I or my my ex-boyfriend, we broke mm. up at the end of this past summer. And, you know, it was I had got I had done like an intensive, an intensive retreat with with Candace and a group of other people and had just been really focusing heavily on my my healing and my growth and I without going without going too deep into that you know the the breakup was for me it was again like another one of the most difficult things that I ever experienced it was significantly harder than than my divorce um significantly harder than that and part of it was, you know, because I walked away for my own mm-hmm. healing. It really wasn't even about him, but I had to I had to choose myself and this path that I'm on because I could not do the healing that I really needed to do while being in a relationship because I was still I wasn't able to immerse myself fully in it, but I also didn't want to keep projecting anything onto him that he wasn't deserving mm-hmm. of. A lot of a lot of people won't do that. A lot of people will stay in something because of the comfort of it or the familiarity of it. 
when they really need to just choose themselves and focus on themselves. And, you know, doing that was was so difficult. I know that it is it was so necessary for me and it helped me like rapidly expand myself over these last like seven, eight months. Like what I've been able to achieve by really choosing myself and focusing on myself was was essential. What lessons did you learn in being able to walk away? I think it further strengthened my understanding that I am immensely powerful and capable on my own and that I can walk any path by myself and still feel loved and supported and not like I need someone there in order to achieve that. It was also a great testament to what can break open for you when you do make the choice to prioritize mm-hmm. yourself. Because what I what I have gained since then has been just astronomical. Um, and I just don't know. I don't know if that would have happened in the relationship. Maybe it would have. I don't know. But there's no sense in trying to speculate that. All I know is that because of the choices that I make, this is what yeah. I've gotten. And so happy and content with what I am receiving and what I know is being created for me by by God, by the universe. And I look at my interactions now, like especially my interactions with my family, with my mother. I just it's it's very it's it's a it's liberating to be in the same scenario that you've been in a dozen times, a hundred times before, and you don't react to it you you're coco no one is talking to you Coco's chiming in the amen corner <laughs> he is always chiming in um it's it's a really beautiful it's a really beautiful feeling to be presented with the same scenario that has triggered you like intensely triggered you um, and made you really emotional to be in that same scenario and just get to sit there and just watch it, observe it and see what's happening and be conscious of what's happening, but not give in to the emotional pull. That right there is one of the greatest feelings in the world. Like that is power. That is control. And I think that's what a lot of people are trying to achieve, but they don't know how, they don't know how to get there. They don't know the steps to take. And so I really hope that you know, what I've talked about today has helped people understand that, yes, you can have that power and that control and that, that freedom. Cause that's what I feel now. Like, remember when I said that I was in acting class and I just yeah, wanted to be yep, free. Full circle, yeah. I legitimately, truly at this point on, what is this? April mm. 8th, April, April 7th, 7th. <laughs> April 7th, 2020. I feel that freedom that I was searching for, you know, four or five years ago, I feel like, and don't get me wrong, I'm not done. This is something I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. But I now see what is possible. And I feel it and I live it. And it's amazing to be in this space where I don't feel like anyone has control over me or how I how I react. And if, and if someone, and if, and if I do get triggered or something does bring something up for me, it's not a bad thing. It just, it's another, it's just yet another opportunity to learn about myself. And so even those situations, I welcome them because I'm not going to beat myself up about them. I'm much more conscious of them. And I know that those experiences are just giving me more in-depth understanding of who I am and where I'm at right now and how I can continue to ascend. So everything is a gift, everything. Oh, thank you so much. Like (laughs) before we close, do you have any, any last, I don't know, encouragement, any encouragement for our listeners? For women who are listening to this, like, okay, what's the first step? What would you say the first step is? I think the first step is having having willingness to see things different from how you've been choosing to see them. I think, yeah, I think that's the first step. Um, it's 
being willing to to see that the way that you're doing things isn't working for you anymore and it's okay to do something different. I think that's the first step because nothing can nothing can follow unless you feel like you can do something different from what you've been doing because that's what our programs are. Our programs are just it's just certain types of behavior being played over and over and over again on a, a never-ending loop until you decide, you know what? I'm tired of this record. I want to put on a different record. I want to play something else. I want to play this life differently. And I think the next thing after that is realizing that when you when you choose to see things differently, you can see anything you want to see. Life and every interaction that happens in life is what you choose to see it as. And it can be whatever you want it to be. But you create that through your thoughts and through your actions. Mm. Oh, and Yamoria, can I just can I say one more thing? Of course. I feel like I feel like there's just like a I don't I don't know what's gonna come out, but okay, here um, we are. It's for the late. It's for the ladies. It's for all the women that are that are listening. Um, I just want you all to know that you are divine. You are goddesses. You are the embodiment of of the source where we all come from. Whether you're a mother or not, or you choose to do that or not, we are the ultimate creators. And take pride in that. And and take comfort in that. You can have any life or any kind of life that you want. Um, and you have the ability and the power to create it. You just have to believe in it and you have to set firm boundaries and you have to take action to get what you want, regardless of who is trying to tell you whether or not it's possible. It is possible. Mm. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> that's beautiful. I'm, I was giving it, I was giving it a, some breath. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Can you give us a recap now? I already know she's not on Twitter, y'all. Don't even try. Um, <laughs> us. I'm on Twitter, but I won't respond. She's there. I mean, but like, uh, give us a recap of where we can follow you on Instagram. Yes. Yes, you can follow me on Instagram. It's at Andrea Bordeaux. A N D R E A B O R D E A U X. Bordeaux like the wine. Thank you so much for having me. This this means a lot and I really appreciate it. Um appreciate you taking the time to to hear me and giving me this space. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So like honestly, pleasure is all mine. Seriously. I am this has been so amazing. Such an amazing journey. Thank you so much for sharing um and for literally being that person, like you said, it's all about what we can give and you really are embodying your own mission that, you know, I read in your bio, like you really are about that. I appreciate it. So Thank much. you. And you're welcome. I'm, this is why I'm here. I'm just going deeper and deeper into my purpose every single day. And it's, that's the real gift. Mm -hmm. This has been part two of my interview with Andrea Bordeaux. Please check out part one if you haven't. Some of you I'm sure just kept listening on. Circle back to part one. It'll come full circle. Hey, 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 before you go, this has been another episode of Inside Out Podcast. Be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcast or Google Podcast or follow on Spotify. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ya Right Productions, for more digital and visual content coming your way soon. Follow Inside Out Podcast on Instagram and follow me, Ms. Right on Time, on the gram and Twitter. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm your host, Yamoria Wright. See it? Say it, spell it, and don't wear it out.